Hi, it's Chester Tubble from Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, we're going to look at a new feature in Excel 2013 uh, called Table Slicers. And uh, slicers were available in previous versions of Excel, but only for pivot tables. And what we're going to use them for is filtering uh, an Excel table rather than a pivot table. So uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is convert this table here. I've got about uh, 100 records here for data and I need to convert this table to an Excel table um, and the way you do that well one of the ways you can do that is on the home tab to go up to format as table and then you have to choose one of these pretty colors so well, for argument's sake I'm just going to choose this first one uh, now it asks me about my range uh, A1 to E100 that's fine my table has headers keep that ticked click on OK that provides us with a little bit of formatting and some drop downs. Uh, but we're going to also um, uh, connect this table to some slices now. Now we're going to do that by going up to insert. And then in the filters group, you'll see uh, there's a little slices button here. And what I'm going to do is just uh, decide at this point which slices I want. Now, a slicer is essentially going to be able to filter uh, this. Uh, database here um, so I want to filter maybe by branch by product group and customer type so I click on OK and you'll see I get my slices here so all the slicer does is basically just list the unique values in each of the fields they take up quite a bit of room on the screen so probably in the long run you'll want to kind of um, do a little bit of uh, rearranging of these and one thing you can do is to actually increase the number of columns within the slicer so say I chose to uh, in this options tab here uh, specify that I want three columns for this branch um, slicer well I've actually done it for product group that's pretty good obviously the one I had selected let's just uh, then rearrange the size of that and then we could do the same for customer group. Let's say we want three for that. Uh, it's worth just spending a little bit of time just getting these right. And then I can do the same for branch. Let's say I want three for that as well. Now you can also, um, once you've rearranged them, kind of add some colour to the situation. So I might, for example, have that one as red. I'm just using these kind of slice of styles up here. Have that one as purple. Have that one as green. So let's have a go at actually filtering our table using these. Um, so let's say I'm only interested in sales from the Brighton and Hove brand. So if I click on that. Um, it filters my list just like a fil normal filter would. But it does tell me something. It tells me that all these product groups are sold within the Brighton and Hove branch bar the DIY and electronics product group. So uh, let's choose London. And you can see there's even less product groups sold in there. And apparently no web sales. Oxford. Um, Southampton. So it gives us some useful analysis just within the uh, the slices. Um, if I want to choose more than one item within a slicer, I can use the control key once I've selected my first one to select a non-contiguous item, so Brighton and Portsmouth. Or if I wanted to select contiguous items, say Brighton and Hove through to Chichester, I could just hold down the shift key on Chichester and do that as well. You can also specify um, values within more than one slicer. So I could say, uh, let's look at Edinburgh sales for store sales um, and only books. I only end up with one record there. Any point you want to clear a filter, uh, you can just click on these little clear filter buttons here. OK, so hopefully you can see that slicers provide a very, very visual way of uh, being able to filter your list um, creates a nice little dashboard effect has the same functionality really as filters uh, but it's just a whole lot more visual
Okay, hopefully that's helpful. Thanks very much for listening.